Hello. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to use your graphing calculators or Excel to calculate these binomial probabilities. Now, here's an example problem. Based on a Harris Interactive poll, 20% of adults believe in reincarnation. Assuming that six adults are randomly selected, find the indicated probability. Now, we're selecting six adults at random. This represents the total number of trials. It's a fixed number of trials where n is equal to 6. Now, for each adult, the likelihood that one adult believes in reincarnation is going to be independent of another adult, assuming that we're selecting these adults at random, which is actually explicitly stated in the problem. So we have independence as well. And then last, the probability that an adult believes in reincarnation is a constant probability of 20%. Therefore, with all of the requirements satisfied, we can use our formulas for a binomial probability distribution to help us find parts A, B, C, and D of this problem. Now, the formulas for a binomial probability are pretty complicated. The probability of exactly x successes out of n trials for a constant probability of success p is given by n factorial over the difference of n minus n, that difference factorial, times x factorial, times the probability of success to the x power, times the complement to the n minus x power. Well, that's a lot to type in. So let's use our graphing calculators instead. Now, using the TI-83 plus, and the TI-84 is very similar, we need to access distributions, which is actually the secondary function above the VARS button, which is, neat, which is right close to your down arrow here the down arrow button. So in order to access that secondary function of distributions, we hit second, followed by VARS, and then it opens up a menu of distributions, D-I-S-T-R. Let's scroll down until we find binomial PDF, which stands for binomial probability distribution function. When I click enter, it's going to wait for me to type in the arguments of this function. And the arguments of this function are going to be the parameters for the function. It's going to be the number of trials n, followed by the probability of success p, and then finally the number of successes we're interested in x. And we're going to separate those three values with commas. So if we're interested in out of six adults, comma, for our constant probability of success of 20%, which I'm going to type in as a decimal. You can't type it in as a percent. We'll type it in as a decimal. If you try and type it in as, you know, a percent without, you know, as like 20, it's going to error out on you. Comma, and we're interested in the likelihood of exactly five adults out of six believe in reincarnation, so x is equal to five. I end the parentheses, and what this will give me is the binomial probability that out of six people, five adults will believe in reincarnation, where the probability that one person believes in reincarnation is 20%. I click on enter and it gives me 0 .001536, which is about 0.1536%, so it's not very likely. We could confirm this now using Excel as well. In Excel, in the function line here, I type in an equals and start typing in the word binomial. B I N O M. And at this point, there's only three functions that remain, one of which has a warning sign, which means this is an older function. You probably don't want to use that. But we do want to use this binome.dist, which you can see the description is listed here. It says this function is going to return the individual term binomial probability for some given values we plug in. So we, we do want the probability. So I'm going to double click on this and it fills it out on this function line and it also tells me what the arguments for this function are going to be. I'm going to type in the number of successes we're interested in, the number of trials for this experiment, the probability of success, and finally an indicator called cumulative which is going to be a true or false value. We're we'll actually type in the words true or false. So the number of successes we're interested in is exactly 5, comma, the number of trials, 6, comma. The probability of success was 20%, so 0 0.20, comma. And now, 
we want exactly five successes. There's only one probability to calculate. So for this cumulative flag, we'll type in the word in all caps, false, and then put in end parentheses. And when we're done, we hit an enter, and notice the value it returns, 0 0.001536, which if you recall, is exactly what our graphing calculator returned. So let's return to the PowerPoint presentation. You can see that for the binomial PDF, where n is equal to 6, p is equal to 20%, and x is equal to 5, for exactly five successes out of the six adults for a constant probability of success of 20%, we get a binomial probability of 0 0.001536. Using Excel, we use the binomial dot distribution where the arguments are going to be the number of successes, number of trials, probability of success, and false because we only want the probability of exactly five successes. So when I type in 5 for x, 6 for n, 0.2 for the probability of success, and that word false, I get the same probability. Now, how about a slightly more complicated probability, where instead of exactly x successes, instead of exactly 5 successes, maybe we're interested in something like, at most, 4 successes. If someone were to ask you to calculate at most four successes, we could use this type of formula. To find the probability that x is at most four, that's actually the probability of exactly zero successes, or exactly one success, or two successes, or three successes, or four successes there would be these probabilities that you would have to calculate individually and then add them up. Because having zero successes certainly fits the bill of at most four, right? So we would have to calculate the probability of zero, the probability of one, the probability of two, the probability of three, and the probability of four. We would have to calculate now these five probabilities and then add them up to calculate the probability of at most x successes. Now, instead of calculating these probabilities individually, we're going to have the calculator do it for us. So breaking out our calculators, I go back to distribution, so second vars to get the distributions again. And now under distributions, I'm going to scroll down until I find binomial CDF. This stands for binomial cumulative distribution function. When you hear the word cumulative, it means adding things together. Namely, we want to add up these probabilities. So I'm going to select the binomial CDF. And if, you know, one other thing, if you're using a TI-84, for some of these functions under distributions, when you select the function, you won't have to type in the arguments individually. It will prompt you for them. It will ask you, what is n? What is x? What is p? And then it'll ask you, you know, to calculate them. Here, we have to type it in manually. Binomial CDF the arguments are going to be the same. Now, if I'm interested in, at most, four successes, here my x is four. We are still dealing with six trials with a constant probability of success of 20%, except now I want at most four. And what this function will do, it will calculate the probability of exactly zero, and exactly one, and exactly two, and exactly three, and exactly four, and it'll add them all up. So if I were to calculate this and hit enter, it gives me a probability of 0.9984. I can confirm that as well using Microsoft Excel. Here I'm going to type in equals again, binomial, and I want to do a binomial distribution. Now if I'm interested in at most four successes, I type in four for the number of successes, six for the number of trials, 0.2 for a probability of success, and now for cumulative, I want to say true now. By indicating a cumulative probability, that means it's going to calculate all of the values for the number of successes from zero all the way up to what I specify for the upper value, which would be four successes. When I click enter on that, notice what I get, 0.9984. 
0.9984. Now, this is to calculate at most x successes. But how about at least x successes? So look at part C from the example problem. What is the probability that at least five of the selected adults believe in reincarnation? If I'm interested in calculating the probability of at least five, right? actually, the slide is wrong. Instead of the probability of exact five, what we are interested in is at least five. So to calculate the probability of at least five successes out of six trials for a constant probability of success of 20%, what we're going to do is find the complement of the probability of at most four. Because think about this. If we're interested in finding the probability of at least five, the probability of not at least five, which would be the complement, would be the probability of at most four, which we already know is 0.9984. So one minus the cumulative binomial probability of six trials with at most four, success, uh, four successes, given a constant probability of success of 20%, will give you 1 minus 0 0.9984, which is 0 0.0016. Which, notice, you can type in your graphing calculator the same way. 1 minus second distributions, scroll down to the binomial CDF, six trials with a constant probability of success of 20%, at most four successes, gives me 0 0.0016. You can even type that here as well, in one line as well, equals one minus binomial distribution. Number of successes is gonna be at most four, comma, six trials, comma, 20% probability of success, and a cumulative flag of true. So this will calculate the probability of at most four successes. Subtracting that from one gives us the complementary probability, which would be the probability of at least five successes, 0 0.0016.